Hey guys, Gary here. Welcome back to the Honolulu Harbor Expansion Project Proposal, Part 2. Today we'll cover Phases 2 and 3. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of what we discussed last week. Uh, the project mission statement is that uh, this proposal is for the Hawaii Department of Transportation to expand the Honolulu Harbor at South Sand Island in order to create a super vessel harbor. The super vessel harbor will accommodate up to three super vessels simultaneously. Uh, we talked about how ships are getting bigger. Uh, the bulk liquid super tanker, the VLCC, the 15,000 TEU super container vessel in the new Panabax category, and of course the large cruise ships in the Oasis category. Um, a five phase time sensitive plan carried out over four years will help to establish a 60 foot draft from all three berths at the end of Sand Island to uh, channel with adequate infrastructure to sufficiently accommodate vessels of this size at beam and length. Uh, we discussed thoroughly the uh, environmental impact statement, moved through the scoping, and so now we would have completed phase zero, uh, you know, pending the approval or the initial approval of an EIS and then moved into phase one and now approaching phase two and phase three. So we're going to talk about that today. Okay, so now as we move into the bidding and contracting, uh, if you've ever worked in bidding and contracting, you know it's a very uh, laborious and intensive process. Uh, but there's going to be some specific timelines that have to be met. Uh, don't pay attention to the dates on this slide. Of course, it's all notional. Uh, but just understand that uh, these dates are non-negotiable. Like if the Hawaii Department of Transportation puts out dates for bidding uh, or solicitation, it has to occur. Uh, no deadline or no uh, extensions. Um, you know, you've got the 30-day period, the 45-day period, whatever Hawaii Department of Transportation or that stakeholder determines. Uh, lots of stakeholders here. You've got your Hawaii Department of Transportation, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. They're going to be the executive agent or the trusted agent. Uh, for this. They're going to be drafting up the statement of work uh, along with Hawaii Department of Transportation. Uh, it'll all be federal acquisition regulation compliant, of course. And as I stated earlier, I think in uh, the first segment, uh, we're going to look for federal subsidies. So the Transportation Investment Generating Economic Recovery or TIGER funding uh, will be a portion of the contract payout for this uh, for Contract and Commercial Management, IACCM. I put a website on there. Uh, I said USACE is recognized ex exclusive trusted agent. We've got some hiring estimates down below. Uh, this is all just like a swag at best. Uh, we looked at a couple of uh, different construction organizations, vertical, horizontal, two dredging organizations at a minimum because they've got different capabilities and that's a very specific uh, industry. Uh, so we're going to have to have a diving company, oversight contract management personnel from IACCM and USACE some text there, and then, um, you know, environmental impact uh, monitoring throughout, and that's going to be done largely by NOAA and UH Manoa. Okay, so this slide is your primary stakeholders and then your task organization. Hawaii Department of Transportation is the project lead. They're the project managers. They own the project. Working very closely by their side and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers side is the Advisory IACCM, or International Association for Contract and Commercial Management. They're more of oversight. They're not a, actually a stakeholder, uh, but they're going to make sure that the contracting and that the construction is all compliant. <laughs> Down below, for compliance management, you've got the headquarters U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and then the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers itself actually uh, doing the close monitoring and the day-to-day -day supervision. For environmental compliance, you've got the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and then the UH Manoa Civil Engineering and Marine Sciences Department. At the very bottom, you've got the actual construction companies themselves. But as you can see, the advisory IACCM is there the whole way to make sure that the statements of work are being done correct, the performance work statements are, are fully compliant, and that all construction standards are being met uh, to standard and in accordance with the statement of work. Of course, the biggest thing is the EIS. Uh, that's where NOAA and UH Manoa come in. Okay, so understand that all of these timelines are compressed. So you know we, we move from phase to phase quite you know liberally in this uh, in this presentation. 
but we've got months, if not in some cases up to a year uh, between phases. But after the bidding and contracting process is complete, we will go ahead and move into phase three, which is we start getting into some dredging estimates. Um, and then we start to dig out the coral and then actually do some dredging, okay? Um, and then, you know, what are we going to do with the coral fill? That's a whole other dilemma. That's a whole other slide set uh, that I'm actually going to get into in another series. Uh, but for the purpose of this slide, uh, this does kind of lay out the dredging depths and what we're looking at at the end of Sand Island 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the first one being that uh, the super tanker uh, berthing, uh, 50 to 70 foot range, uh, 50 foot... Um, forward and then 70 foot aft and then for the middle one which is the container ship we've got 50 and 80 because they're going to run a little bit hot a uh, little bit heavier uh, please also note that these depths consider a heaviest capacity scenario for each of the super vessel types so we got we got about a 10 to 15 foot safety buffer uh, especially for the aft dredging estimates um, we're not going to move the the 50 foot is the absolute minimum for the forward and then number three is that superliner, the, the Oasis class uh, for passenger carrier. So we're 50 and 70 on that one as well. But this is just a quick little uh, visual to give you an idea of what, what kind of dredging um, problems or challenges we're going to have. Okay, and then we move into the actual dredging requirements and methods. Uh, this, this pictorial is kind of nice because it shows you uh, the actual equipment that's going to be required for the dredging. There's two major components of the dredging uh, for the end of Sand Island. That's going to be the shallow water and the deep water. For the shallow water, which is going to be the initial phase, you've got uh, a unique piece of equipment called the cutter suction dredger, and that's going to be necessary for the for the literal coral uh, where cutting is always required. And then where cutting is going to be required, but not as extensively uh, later on, uh, you can move to the deep water. Uh, self-propelled suction dredger uh, and uh, they use that they've used it in India and northern Europe uh, in depths up to 164 feet note that our deepest depth is 80 feet so this is going to be ideal for us uh, we're going to be well within our, our window and then throughout the entire operation you've got a piece of equipment uh, a ship called the self-propelled hopper dredger and what that's going to do is it's going to specifically design for the extraction of the sea floor the coral all that coral fill uh, to pull that up and uh, use it uh, to supply our construction efforts for for the massive uh, landfill project that's going to be going on on Sand Island. So we've got we've got a couple different things happening all at the same time: uh, the shallow water, and then at the same time the the hopper dredger, and then for the later phases you've got the the suction dredger, the self-propelled suction dredger, the IHC Merweed Athena, uh, if we can get it. Uh, you know, let's get that guy. Um, that'll be uh, the second phase, or phase three Bravo, uh, while the IHC Merweed Victor Horta is still working. Now, I, I'm saying IHC because uh, IHC is one of the industry leaders. So it's kind of like, you know, if, if I was to analogize this, I would say, you know, yeah, we can call the help desk at Best Buy uh, for, our, for our servicing needs, but if we've got a Microsoft IT team that's willing to come to our house, let's go with that. And that's what Royal IHC, uh, they're a Dutch company, what they bring to the table. You rent their equipment or you get their equipment uh, contracted, they send a team out uh, to operate it and to provide technical assistance. Um, it's important to note here that Royal IHC out of the Netherlands, uh, they're the global market leader for efficient dredging and mining vessels and equipment. They've got vast experience accumulated over the decades and a reliable supplier of innovative ships and supplies for offshore construction. So they've got a very broad customer base, uh, you know, and it includes dredging operators, oil and gas corporation, uh, corporate execs, offshore contractors, and government authorities. All these guys uh, we have at our disposal to use in this project. So if they're going to provide us equipment and the expertise, then let's go with it. You know, maybe we can't afford Kobe Bryant. I don't know. Maybe it's not in a budget. But, you know, in this scenario, I wanted to go with the best. So I chose IHC, Royal IHC out of the Netherlands. Probably not going to be cost effective. But, uh, you know, you always want to try to go for the best. And then, you know, if we can't afford it, then we look at other options, more local options probably. 
Okay, so there's your phase two and three of the Honolulu Harbor Expansion Project proposal. I will cover phase four and five uh, in a few days. I was going to cover, I'm a couple days ahead of schedule. I know my deadline for phase two and three and part of four was on 3 January. I'm a few days early. It's actually 31 December 2014. So this wraps up the year here for me. I will continue on Saturday, 3 January with phase four and five. Um, and then another session will cover the end state and then what what this project does. And then I like to visit that anyways uh, throughout the project. It kind of helps me, re re you know, remind me what the hell it is we're doing. Why are we doing all this? And, uh, you know, let's talk about that now. This expansion uh, will do for Hawaii and the U.S. Um, more than any other port initiative has completed in the last 10 to 15 years. Hawaii will acquire a super vessel capability and enter the global shipping market. Uh, Hawaii, you know, an argument can be made that it's already there, but is it at this level? Hell no. Hawaii becomes the premier transshipment point for the Pacific Rim. Hawaii will earn a status as a gateway to Asia for the United States market as part of the economic pivot to Asia. This expansion provides for superior functionality and facilitates a more fluid transportation network. You have had your read ahead now for the end state in the mission statement on this entire project expansion pr proposal. Uh, please provide feedback, uh, ski8799 at gmail.com or Gary Bonkowski's workspace on my blog on WordPress or just right here on YouTube. Uh, I do appreciate the feedback, so thanks, and I'll see you in a few days.